cool. We are now live. Uh, you can, who wants to drive this? You want to share your screen or will I share mine? Yeah. Um, I'll post in Slack just now. I think I have to set up the permissions for the app to uh, share screens. Have you had any problems with uh, it sharing screens in Chrome? You'll just need to open the accessibility, security, privacy settings and enable screen sharing for Chrome. At, in, at the uh, OSX level or? Yeah, an OSX level. So if you okay. open preferences and then go to uh, security and privacy, and there is a screen recording. Okay. In the list, and then you can just enable Chrome there. You don't actually need to restart Chrome. You can, you can just ignore that for now. Gotcha. Third time's a charm, I hope. Hey, all right, cool. Cool. Are you okay if I just put that live now? Uh, sure. You yeah. can take your time. There's no rush. All right. Let's... No, I'm yeah. <laughs> So we now have a screen. We're creating a repository. And so the repository we're going to create, I don't know if there's a naming convention for GitHub Actions. Uh, let's go with what? Uh, packet host project deleter. Maybe we'll just call it pro project. Packet project. <laughs> and later on, if this gets uh, promoted to packet packet labs, then uh, maybe we'll drop off the, the packet prefix. The P letter um, alliteration. I'm very like aware of it when I'm wearing headphones. And it's like, <laughs> all right, and we'll uh, get started with all of these things. Apache work for you? I mean, I'm more of an MIT person, but oh. you know. <laughs> I, when I, whenever I publish code, I generally just, just like do whatever you want with it. And I think MIT is probably the most permissive license. Yeah. yeah. I, I tend to, for things like this, I tend to go with whatever license is most common for that project type. And I haven't done my research on this one, but uh, I'll uh, reserve the right to change it later. Packet project, that couldn't be confused for anything else. Uh, <laughs> and so, Let's see, what, what do you have to do to create a GitHub action? Uh, should we premise uh, what, what it is that we're trying to do here? That might help one too. So yeah. Marcus and I were just discussing. Uh, we have this thing, I guess, on Friday. Let's go, let's go back in time. We have this thing on Fridays, a packet, where we can allocate some of our time to hack on pack, where we just build our build proof of concept of things that we think are going to be useful internally and externally for people using packet. And Marcus has an idea that solves a common problem. And I'll let you take over that. <laughs> yeah, so the, the problem is that there are a lot of different um, open source packet projects that have uh, the need for some end-to-end -end testing. And whenever you have an end-to-end -end testing environment, you have the potential for uh, your provisioning to fail. And that could leave behind artifacts that uh, 
or costly over time or uh, otherwise just get neglected or forgotten and could become security risks. So you wanna make sure that you're cleaning up these uh, failed artifact resources. In Terraform, they have a concept called a sweeper, which is a set of, uh, it's a, a, an extra testing step that runs, I believe before and after uh, tests to, that is aware of the different resource labels that uh, indicate that a resource was created for testing. So let's say you have a packet server called uh, Terraform or TF test foo, then uh, when the sweeper comes along, if it sees anything named that way, it knows that it's not supposed to be there and it's safer to delete it. Uh, it's also possible in various environments to say delete a, uh, an entire project. And that simplifies things because then you can just say, do I have any projects matching TF test something? I do, let's delete it. Um, now packet doesn't let you delete an entire project because it wants you to confirm that the resources that exist inside of that project are safe to delete. So you have to delete them one by one. In this case, we know exactly what we want to delete. We're going, and uh, what we wanna do is make an all purpose GitHub action that can be used to delete a project by name. Maybe we could use this uh, filter syntax and maybe any projects that match a certain name pattern can be deleted. Uh, or maybe this tool might also be useful for creating projects and creating a, uh, project tokens, project API tokens for, uh, for whatever your end-to-end -end testing environment needs are. So I think that this GitHub action has uh, maybe three things it could do. The one that we're most, imp those three things are creating a project, deleting a project and creating project tokens. The thing that we're most interested in right now is just deleting a project. We can specify a name for it and uh, let it go with that. Uh, and so this is the first time creating a GitHub action. So there's a lot of unknowns. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm hoping I won't be terribly difficult. Uh, so I guess what we need to do first is you've created a repository. Should we just initialize like a, a Go project, I guess? Like before we have the GitHub action, I guess we still want to be able to run this locally. Yeah, let me add you as a collaborator for what it's worth too. Uh, where's that at? Check those collaborator. Oh, that's that's going to be my stop there. I, gotta, <laughs> I have to check my phone for that one. I don't I'm type it in. I won't do that, but uh, we'll just work with what we've got then. So yeah, let's start with some go. Hey Dan, enjoying the stream. Hey. Can, how many people can you have uh, visually on here? Can Dan up join to, us? Up to ten. If Dan wants to join us, he is more than welcome to come and join us. Come on, Dan, don't be afraid. If anyone wants to join or ask questions, you can leave questions via Twitter, YouTube, or Twitch. And if you want to join, drop us a DM. And we'll see what we can do. We are kind of on a very tight schedule as well. Yeah, this might be a to be continued, right? We've got to jump off in 25 minutes. <laughs> Can you just uh, zoom in on your terminal a bit as well, please? Sure. You're not even going to like it. Packet project was possibly the worst repository name, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what could it possibly do? Nobody knows. <laughs> um, and so let's see, the first thing, I wonder if there's a GitHub Actions uh, extension where you can just like create one. We've got all kinds of extensions, right? We have one for Actions, GitHub Actions. I don't know if there's anything particularly special about a GitHub Action though, right? Like it's just a command. So I guess in my head, what we want is, see this is called Packet Sweeper. You would yeah. run packet sweeper and pass in a project ID. It would give you a list of the pro. You know, it would give you a list of all the resources it's potentially going to delete, and then we could confirm it. Um, and then we can add the YOLO flag later, where it doesn't do the confirmation and it just starts deleting everything. 
Yeah. So let's start with like a uh, a main deck go. Yeah. Uh, Can you change your font size as well? Oh yeah, definitely. Awesome. Perfect. So what's the easiest way to consume the packet API from a Go project? Uh, that would be pack and go. So let's get that going here. Uh, Or github.com packing toast packing go. And is this just a client library? I'm not familiar with packing go, so you'll need to kind of keep me right here, but I'm assuming that's a client library for speaking to the API. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a client library for talking to the API. We've got some examples of it, which I can probably use to more quickly provision uh, things. You know, get this uh, up and running. There we go. And I need some project listening to. All right. Uh, this isn't specifying tokens, so we'll we'll need support for tokens. Uh, in the end. We need this thing to take some parameters, so we're going to need to import OS. And the first parameter that we're going to be interested in is the project ID. So uh, project ID, what are we going to call it? Project ID. I'm going to choose the environment. It's easy for right now. <laughs> Because uh, oh. it's not being used, I've got every possible linter in place. We have a friend. What's up, folks? <laughs> hey, Dan. Happy to jump in here. Awesome. This is a pretty sweet setup y'all have going. So this is just the most impromptu thing I think we, we've managed to do yet. We were just like jumping on a Zoom and we're like, hey, we should like build this thing. And then the next thing I know, we're broadcasting it. And it's like, you know, it, I, I think the, it'll be fun. <laughs> so then uh, and I did a lot of cross-plane stuff in the past, including the cross-plane packet provider, which uh, this will also be useful for for end-to-end -end testing in that environment. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I'm some of this packing go stuff looks pretty familiar as we're obviously using that for all the stuff in the uh, packet provider as well. And it's nice to see um, Marcus and I did a stream. I guess it was over a month ago now, working on some of the uh, packet provider stuff for crossplane um, and trying to do some Tinkerbell stuff, which we. Uh, debatably succeeded at. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, a little more focus on integrations and stuff on the packet side. So I've definitely been enjoying some of these streams lately you've been doing, David. Oh, thank you. And I guess that would be a good thing to tell everyone that you just agreed to join me on a stream as well. And uh, we yep. uh, we're going to be taking a look at the SecCom popular, which I'm very excited about. Definitely, yeah. There's some super cool stuff. Um, that's one of the things in the 1.19 release in Kubernetes, which came out Wednesday, um, that, that is one of the cooler um, aspects. So I'm excited to dive into that as well. Yeah, SecComp is one of those things that I know I should be providing profiles for applications. And then I'm just like, but why is it so painful to do it? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no, that's a huge thing. And you know, the SecComp operator addresses some of that, but uh, to be totally honest with you, and we can get into this more in that stream, but um, like it's still hard to craft your SecComp profiles, right? So the operator is solving getting those on your nodes and that sort of thing in your cluster. Um, but we actually just had our first uh, kind of like community meeting for the SecComp operator yesterday. And one of the things we're looking at is uh, recording profiles, right? So you can run your pods and we'll record a profile and say, hey, this is all the syscalls that your um, process made while running. Would you like to you know, restart this with the profile applied and we'll put it on the node for you? So those are all sorts of things we're looking into make that a little bit easier. 
So I tried to do that about nine months ago, the start of the year, I think it was, uh, mm -hmm. using BPF as a way to try and log all the syscalls that a binary was running. Mm -hmm. But then I, I had to learn, you know, eBPF and that. I was just like, you know what, I, I'm not doing this. So yeah. I'm glad that someone else is doing it for me. Yeah. That's my, that's my preferred route for everything. If someone else, like right now, you know, Marcus is just sitting writing all the code and we just get to sit and chat. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this works for me. This is a lot more relaxed than, than some of the streams we've done. <laughs> I like this format. And then you guys could just like banter about whatever and if they, if they like jump in on things. This is, you yeah. get a three-person three uh, format for TBS now. Yeah, no, I really think the three people is really good because like you were saying, um, someone can be doing work because like typically if you have two people, like for instance, if it's just you and Marcus, if Marcus is writing the code, like if you're asking him questions, it's going to be hard for him to focus on what he's doing as well as engaging and have like a conversation that's entertaining to viewers. Um, but this way we kind of get a, a background track while people are watching Marcus's work. Here. All right, so let's... What, what is it you're doing right now, Mark? I'm going to make you talk while you could know that Dan just said that. So <laughs> we're getting uh, a project ID, and you're just going to we're just going to try and print a list of devices. Oh no, you're actually deleting them. I mean, that's oh yeah, no, this is yeah, <laughs> hard, hardcore. This yeah, there's no going back here. We're going to delete everything uh, that might exist. So what things could exist inside of a project? Um, devices, elastic IPs. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of those two. Lands, <laughs> volumes. Uh, let's let's get a. I'm gonna go with the generic um, letter since. Yeah. All right. No, I guess not. Yeah. So. Uh, so <laughs> you copy and paste in code. Like get the get the uh, singular, not the plural. So I'm not the world's best goal developer, but I'm assuming those red squiggly lines mean bad. Oh yeah, well, let's see what I did wrong. Uh, project list two, there's a response that I don't care about. There you go. And obviously I'm not checking for error, but, you know, what could go wrong? Yellow, um, let's do this. So Dan, do you understand why we're building this? Did we did we make that clear, or do you want me to go over that again? Um, I I got the basic. I missed the very beginning of the stream, um, but essentially, what this is supposed to be a GitHub action, right? That does some checking for things and packet related projects. Yeah. So as we do more and more end to end testing, we just need the ability to have like these ephemeral projects and like be able to clean them up and. Uh, the API won't allow you to remove a project if it has any resources. So gotcha. we just need to be able to work out what those are, delete them. I'm assuming we're going to have to actually wait for those to be deleted too before we eventually remove the project. So. Yeah, I can't remember. Are these calls synchronous or asynchronous when you make a delete call here in the in the SDK? I I am not a hundred percent sure. I think. Uh, I think that they trigger events that we might have to follow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that that would definitely that would be a problem for this. Something to figure out next. It's almost like if you had something that was continuously reconciling the state of these things, that that would be helpful. <laughs> what are you What are you suggesting, Dan? I don't know. <laughs> this project called Crossplane that might be useful. I don't know. It seems like kind of heavy handed, right? To like spin up a like a kind cluster install cross plane and then, you know, <laughs> something to delete these things. But one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot lately and and not just me, other folks in the cross plane community is like if you could package um, essentially like a, a Docker image that was kind um, cross plane and then like, you know, a provider of your choice, then you could essentially just run a single container and do like almost like a, uh, you know, like a cron job or something that ran like this, the provider temporarily to do things like clean up like this or something like that. Um, you know, I don't know what, if there would be uh, as many use cases as I'm thinking right now, um, but it would be something for sure to experiment with and also could be useful for, you know, local development and that sort of thing. I'm surprised that, is there not like a mock 
Kubernetes API server that could be used. So you could maybe run Cloudflare without spinning up a full blowing cluster or even kind. Yeah, so um, sort of, yes. One of the things um, that uh, you can actually do with Crossplane is run it in a tenant mode, um, which allows you to essentially run the, um, you know, like if you're running controllers and stuff like that, you have to actually have infrastructure for that to run on in a cluster to schedule that and that sort of thing. So you have to have a full cluster. But then if you are actually just using an API server to, uh, you know, for those providers to interact with, you don't actually need that scheduling capability. All you need is basically the API server and a backing data store, typically at CD. So you could run uh, a very stripped down Kubernetes, which is basically just those two components um, that essentially your providers would watch um, and interact with, because all that's doing is basically storing state for you, right, and allowing you to get that. So it's not fully mocked because you are actually still running like uh, the like etcd and that sort of thing, but you can run it. You know, uh, for instance, we have some end-to-end -end tests that are using like the cube builder type thing, where you're actually just executing the binaries behind the scenes um, and talking to those. Um, and then those are running in a those end-to-end -end tests are running into like a kind cluster or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something. Uh, to look at there. I'd be interested in a, a uh, kind of like a CI CD pipeline is a, a cool place to look at doing that. So any GitHub action would be even simpler because folks could just kind of like add that to their project immediately. That's a lot of to-do statements. Yeah, and what I realized in writing the to-dos is that I'm not gonna care about any of the rest of this for right now. I'm just gonna care about deleting the devices well, yeah, because we can just create a project. That I'll do that just now. Yeah. I'll create a project with one device, and then we can just run it. Yeah. So let's what? see what's, what's, oh, delete, not checked. It's fun and deleting a, a real server project yeah. with code that you've written in under three and a half minutes. So. Yeah. Do all of these uh, underlying clients implement the, they don't implement the same interface, right? So you can't just like pass them in and just call delete on all of them. Because their parameter, uh, ah, right. yeah, their their parameters are different. I wish, I wish. Um, and usually, when you want something like that, you need to like pass in some sort of function to do it, mm -hmm. or, or a set of functions. So, yeah, that'd be something uh, you need to work out. What, yeah. uh, what is the dot 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 um, of, of functions that you would use as parameters? What's the right go for terminology for that? Uh, I always just call it like parameter expansion, which I don't think is what. Yeah. Uh, well, JavaScript and JavaScript and other languages is called the spread operator. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Let me actually. I'll look that up. <laughs> Since I'm just the the guest here, I can be the the researcher as well. So here's a random one for you. And while you're doing that, like I've been writing a lot more Rust this year, and they have an operator called the Turbofish. Have you seen the Turbofish? Mm -mm. Uh, it's like this weird syntax for generic functions. Um, I'll need to paste it somewhere. I'm not going to be able to describe what it looks like. But it's the weirdest thing I've seen in code in a long time. Uh, all right, Marcus, I'm sending you an API key. Oh, is this for for my purposes here? Yeah, for just so that you don't have to wait on spinning up a project. I figured I would just provide. Do you, you have that. Do you have a resource in there? I should probably print what I'm deleting if that's the case. There's a server called ams one t one small x eighty six zero one. Yes. And you don't care if I delete it, right? I do not mind if you delete it. No, and I've sent you the project ID, so you should have everything you need. And I'll, in fact, you'll oh. I created a project, a project API key, so you're not. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that should be better than, right? You, you can delete the device, but you won't be able to delete the project, I would imagine. Also, so, the uh, official name for the the kind of spread and Golang is very variadic function parameters. You that's what we're for variadic. I couldn't remember that. Uh, so that's our delete. Yeah, C calls it as well. Variadic. We should wait for them, but we'll maybe skip the waiting for now. And uh, what else do we want to do? I'm gonna delete. Them. I need to get into a uh, terminal and handy way to uh, 
read in secrets that somebody passes you in Slack would be to do this. <laughs> uh, I can just type in whatever and we're good to go. Follow it up with a clear or with an echo. It'd be wonderful. And now I'm going to grab that secret that you handed me. Uh, password one, two, three. Got it. <laughs> and project ID. Do the same thing. Uh, that one I did not prompt it properly. Let's do that again. I've got a project ID and I've got a packet auth token. So let's see, go run. <laughs> uh, yeah, what could go wrong? YOLO. <laughs> I love how you're not even commenting on the delete. You're actually just going to wait and see what happens. All right, I need to give this thing a name, don't I? Um, GitHub.com slash display slash packet project. What did I not comment out? Say? Uh, yeah, the arguments. Which one? Is it the true? I thought that it took a force true. Oh, it doesn't. What happened? Devices delete. Always trust a red squiggle. Like that's just the rule. Yeah, I thought I thought there was a a force parameter to force it to detect. I guess that's something that the the packet UI does manually. Um, and this is something that you know definitely needs to be improved is the uh, the documentation on each function. Okay, packet off to I read it, but I didn't export it. <laughs> so I do this, and I probably need to do the same for the project ID. I didn't get an output. Uh, I assume your device has not been deleted. Let's see what happened. Uh, it didn't panic, though. It's a good sign. Um, so why is there a red squiggle on device? Oh, you know what? The problem is here. Uh, well, because it's, it's not inside the next floor, right? Yeah. Did you not just return earlier? I mean, I don't want to give you shit for your code not being very ergonomic, but come on. <laughs> you want me to exit early? All right, all right fine. <laughs> I, I just I have this really strong hatred for else statements in any any code at all. So. Yeah, the um, going. Uh, yeah, you have to change it. There's no yeah. The going went there. Probably would have yelled at me for that too. <laughs> the going CI went. All right, so now we're good. So does the panic do an exit, or do you have to return? Panic exits, yeah, it's fatal. And there's no, um, yeah. I, do I need a return? It hasn't complained about needing a, a bare return. Nice. Cool. So now all I have to do is Dockerize this and publish it in the GitHub Actions. How do you do that? We have five minutes. Go. <laughs> It's gone. Like there you go. It deleted. All right. So next step is uh, publishing. Let's get you back up. All right. So we need a Docker file, and we need ARM sixty four support. So you know, don't get lazy. <laughs> uh, delete all devices and project ID. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Yeah. Mark is agreeing that the red squiggle doesn't lie. Well yeah. said. All right, so packet project, we've got that. So what uh, do we have instructions? Do you have anybody dig up a link on how to make a Docker um, a GitHub action friendly Docker file? I assume it okay. needs to be a Docker file. 
So yeah, you have to build a container image, and I believe it has to be wrapped. Like all the examples I've seen before, I'll still hold that up and do one just now. Um, it's generally like a JavaScript file that then execs out through the shell and runs a binary, um, which is not great. But that seems just to be the way that it's done. Let's see. So there is the Cypress. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Do we actually need an entry point shell script, or is it enough to just run the thing that we've compiled? Uh, you should just be able to run it directly if you built it. Wait, are you are you building? I assume you're building it in the uh, in the image as well. So I. Um, so I'm, I'm building, oh, the, yeah, there's a name, so I can make a builder staged. Um, yeah, well, I guess you don't have to since this is just a, a quick stream, but yeah. you could just do promise builder and then copy it over to a, a scratch image or something like that or distro us. Right. Any quick uh, copy and and scratch that? images. That's it. What was that, Marcus? Um, just looking for any kind of quick examples I can find of that. If only I knew a project that uses scratch. Docker image. Uh, oh, you can just do from scratch. You don't need to do anything special. I can walk you through that. So wrong. fill up your Docker file. Yeah. Yeah. So just at the very yeah, just do from scratch. That's it. But we're still building. Um, the next one could be from scratch. Uh, I think we'd still want to use Alpine for both. But what I want is like the stage. We want to be able to copy it from a build stage to a. Um, the, the so you can do a from go lang at the top, copy and all the code, and then do a run go build, and then fill that through in the next stage. Yeah. From go lang, uh, we want to copy everything, or it's already here. It's already Just here. Copy. Just copy main dot go. And and the and the go mod and the go sum. Just do dot dot. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we want a uh, run go build. Uh, not good for the build cache now when you change the readme. We're gonna have to recompile that whole ten lines of code we've got there. <laughs> How do you stage it? <laughs> Sorry? How do you stage this now? So you can reference that as from zero or after the from go line you can do it as build, which is what I would tend to do. And then that means it's named as build. So from go lang space A S build. And then you can copy from build now. Uh so just get from scratch there. You guys don't like debugging. I need that outline shell. And then in your copy ca uh, packet project down there, you can do a, a dash dash from before your arguments. Right. Uh, which I guess the output is it packet project? It was, or is it just going to be main? I guess. So from equals build. build. Yeah. <laughs> And there's no working directory in the top one. I can't remember where Go does it, but I think it's slash Go slash source. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's slash Go source. We may have to confirm that. Who needs a language server when you have me and David live commenting here? <laughs> we are we are your squiggly lines. <laughs> All right. So, do you think I need something else? Do you think we've got what we need here? Yeah, so the copy's not going to work. The, so yeah. it's going to be slash go slash source slash. Uh, and then is it just going to be called main? I forget what the default is. I haven't done a not dash o. Out. I mean, like, is the binary just going to be called main? You know what I mean, Marcus? Uh, yeah, I'm going to see if. Uh, I would probably add run echo pwd or something like that. Or, so you can see where it's building that yeah. because that path is a guess. Really. It's yeah, PWD. Yeah, I think I think that it's going to be in Go source slash. I think it's just going to be called Go source main, likely. Um, so this is what the container looks like. If I copy dot, it went into Go was the default directory. Ah, right. So. Should I worry about if it's going to the Go directory? Does it matter? Uh, we go back out to the Go directory and see. Oh wait, it didn't copy it over though, did it? Uh, I didn't. I just ran it. Oh, ran I see. I see. Mm -hmm. So you could copy it into source if you wanted, but 
Oh, also, is it? Oh, it's nine. Yeah, I'm going to oh, yeah. here in just a minute. Yeah, we got to run away, too. But I think like, you, you, you did well. You got really far in, like, under 30 minutes. Yeah, probably impressed. too long. There's so much. There's a lot of the, the, the mental uh, bifurcation. All right, well, I guess we better go to our meeting, but we will continue this next week. Uh, so thank you both for joining me. Thank you for typing all that code, Marcus. And, uh, <laughs> Catch you all soon. Yeah. See you.